Good morning, everyone. I'm Mary with Mary Greeley News. Thank you for joining me. Well, up there by Truckee, there has been a series of earthquakes, the largest being a magnitude 4.7. The shake alert sent out a notification all the way to California, throughout California, of a potential 6.0 earthquake had occurred. Originally, USGS said the earthquake was a magnitude 5.1 that they revised to a 4.7. There's been multiple aftershocks, and according to USGS, there's been 12 earthquakes reported within the last 24 hours. This earthquake started with a magnitude 3.2 at 9.26 p.m. This would have been the foreshock before the main shock of the 4.7, originally a 5.1. It looks like we have uplift and spreading of the fault zone. The first wave of the earthquake came from the north and moved towards the southeast. This is the fault line. Tension was applied coming from the east. A few minutes later, actually about nine minutes later, came the main shock of the earthquake, a magnitude 4.7. USGS has it as a depth of 10 kilometers, but actually it was about 5 miles in depth. The shallower the earthquake, the greater the distance it would have been felt. On the USGS report, 7,490 people only filed what they had felt. It was felt over a very large area, and there was even reports, I don't know if it was a coincidence, but power outage in Grass Valley, California. Reports from Santa Rosa, Sacramento Bay Area, San Francisco, um, Oakland, San Mateo, all the way, let's pull it down, all the way here to Vacaville, the San Luis Reservoir, uh, Fresno, Porterville, uh, Greenhorn Mountains, Lake Isabella, and close to Bakersfield. A Twitter post coming from Nevada City said they lost power there for about 15 minutes. Wanted to know if it was connected to the earthquake. Well, that makes two areas that reported power outages. Another Twitter post about the power outage said 13,500 people across Nevada County are impacted by the power outage due to the earthquake. No major damage has been reported from these earthquakes. There has been past earthquakes in 1884. Close to this area was a 6.0. Closer to Reno in 1948, a 6.0. And there's been some small earthquakes over in that location today. This set of earthquakes is not far from my report that I did about Lake Tahoe and the earthquakes that have been occurring there and the magma that's rising up and yeah causing all this drawn out in yellow here these little circles are past cinder cones and Mount Rose have had, has had uplift because of the magma coming into the system under this area so I have to wonder what is going on because the first initial earthquake showed uplift? Because of the uplift that occurred, the second earthquake, the 4.7, we can see that the fault line moved, going from north to south. Now you would think that the uh, fault would have moved because of the uplift going from south to north, but that's not the case. Here's the first earthquake down here, the 3.2, and then to the north was the 4.7. Those are the only two moment tensor balls that USGS has. They don't have them on the other earthquakes that are further out. Uh, the 3.1, the 2.1, the 2.2, the 1.4, the 1.5. You can see there's a circle here. Down south we got Independent Lake. Here is the waveform for the magnitude 3.2 earthquake and I'll bring it down different monitors and I want to look at them compare them to different types of earthquakes we have tectonic like earthquakes shallow volcanic earthquakes 
surface events, and harmonic tremors. Let's bring this down and we'll take a look at some of the other ones and compare them. And here's some more signatures from some more monitors. Yeah, what does that look like to you? All right, I want to look at the magnitude 4.7 earthquake wave. Yeah, it's been clipped here. Um, what clip means is it's so large that it wouldn't fit on the drum. Actually, they're not drums anymore. They're electronic monitors, but um, yeah, it wouldn't show up. So yeah, look at that. All right, let's take a look. Yeah, really can't tell from this one. And we'll bring it down to the other ones. I would have to say that it's between a, um, a shallow volcanic earthquake or a harmonic earthquake, both basically about the same if you look at it and we'll come down and look at the other let me pull this over for you yep This here is a magnitude 2.2, .2, and let's take a look and see what we can see with this earthquake. All right, going back up and going back to the different types of earthquakes. Yeah. Yeah. So what are your thoughts? Um, there was light damage, mostly things that fell off of shelves and, um, yeah, the power outages. Um, did you have damage from this earthquake? If so, please put your comments down below. Um, people are reporting that their animals reacted. There was a loud boom. Um, some major shaking. USGS is classifying this as a light or weak earthquake for the Oakland area, a level two, which is considered weak. Carson City, um, also weak. Cold Springs would have been considered um, a light earthquake. Forest Hill, uh, Dollar Point, which is the area of Lake Tahoe, and then Truckee would also be considered a light earthquake. So those of you there at Lake Tahoe and <laughs> Truckee are probably saying, well, that's considered a light earthquake. I hate to feel what a large one would be. Are you prepared for a large earthquake? Many people don't even know what to do to prepare for a large earthquake. Well, for one, make sure everything is securely bolted to the walls, and that includes hot water heaters, uh, refrigerators, stoves, um, picture frames, large things you may have above the headboard of your uh, bed. Have a wrench um, easily accessible so you can turn off your gas lines in case there's a gas leak. You don't want fires or explosions. Have a pair of shoes next to your bed. Some people even have a hard hat. Evidently, most earthquakes happen at night. If you're in a two-story building or an apartment complex, I would get off the bed and get on the floor next to the bed. That way you would have the bed to protect you from the ceiling above collapsing and crushing you on your bed. Use text messaging instead of making phone calls. Have someone that's out of state to contact. Um, to act like an operator to relay messages to loved ones where you're at and what your plan is. Have emergency supplies easily accessible and all in one location. Have a bug out kit with emergency supplies along with food and water and don't forget the pets. Have a pet carrier 
to put your pets in for emergency evacuations. That way, too, if you have to go to a shelter, you have a pet carrier to keep your pets in. Have a place that you're going to meet all your loved ones after a major earthquake. Those are just some of the basics. Child safety locks on the cupboards would help prevent canned foods flying out, glassware flying out and injuring you. Stay away from windows and get under something very strong. If you have any other thoughts you might want to put down, please do so. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. If you wish to support my work, I'm also on Patreon. And I also post many things on Twitter that YouTube would censor. Please stay safe and I'll talk to you later. God bless you. Bye.